Hey everybody, we've got a title to defend. I'm Mike, Tommy and Kevin are not here, but welcome to the Quiet Day Podcast, the definitive Money Desk Podcast. We are back after a week off. Tommy and Kevin absent, kind of an executive decision by me. So first of all, Tommy, new parent, had his baby about two weeks ago now. A little Kevin Kevin is doing well. Everybody's happy, healthy, but you know. Two weeks parents, I said, I figured Tommy should have a time off. Kevin, I believe, is in Thailand right now. So that is why he is gone. But the real reason, I just forgot to text them this week and to see what they were doing. But I figured they could have time off anyway because I do have a sort of solo pod that I, I want to do. I want to lay it all out there and then maybe we can have pods to follow it up. But I think doing it unencumbered and without any interjections might be useful for everybody. And then we can talk about it after, like I said. So it's going to take a little bit of setup. So I don't know if everybody knows what chat GPT is, but it is artificial intelligence is kind of certain section sectors of, I guess, you know, the world, the communities are really excited about it. It's a, conversational AI bot. You can tell it to do all kinds of things and it's just going to, you know, write stuff and, and give you the answers essentially. Uh, so, you know, Microsoft's going really crazy over this. They've invested in it. Google's trying to come up with its own thing. It's all, it's a whole deal. So if you don't know what it is, just search chat BT, chat GPT. People will know what's happening. You'll figure it out from there. Uh, it's got all kinds of crazy Uses like people are having it take, you know, med school exams and passing the bar. And I just saw it received a B on an MV MBA paper at Penn at Wharton Business School, which is like a huge school if you for those that are international, don't know. So yeah, it's got really huge potential, could have a huge impact on our lives in the future. You know, it's down a lot because it's at capacity and people are trying new and different ways for it. I mainly ask it about the Mighty Ducks. So sorry to anybody who's been trying to get in where it's me asking it random questions. But one of the things it can do is, you know, give us a Mighty Ducks floor. So a little caveat here. It only goes up to 2021 in current events. So it doesn't really know about game changers or Emilio Estevez leaving, that kind of stuff. It obviously doesn't know about season two of Mighty Ducks Game Changers, but it does know about the original trilogy, and I asked it to write us a Mighty Ducks 4. So I don't know the best way to do this. I think I'm going to start with the opening scene, and then I will go to its plot summary here. I will say its dialogue is very weak. So we're we're going to need to punch it up before you know this goes to production. But this is the opening scene of Mighty Ducks 4 according to ChatGPT and uh I am just going to read from it. It says the opening scene of Mighty Ducks 4 could start with Gordon Bombay now in his mid 50s relaxing at home enjoying his retirement. He's surrounded by memorabilia from his coaching days, including pictures, jerseys, and hockey sticks. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Gordon answers to find a young woman who introduces herself as a representative from USA Hockey. This is the editor's note here. I did try to get chat GPT to like give me a character name, and, and it was like, it can be whatever you want. So we'll have to come up with somebody good. Maybe it's Tibbles' daughter. But anyway, so... Doorbell rings, representative from USA Hockey is at the door to find Gordon, and then chat B GPT continues, Woman, Mr. Bombay, we need your help. There's a new threat to the sport of hockey, and we believe only you had the experience and leadership skills to bring the Mighty Ducks back together and defeat this new enemy. Gordon is initially reluctant, but as the woman explains the situation and the potential consequences, he begins to feel a sense of duty and responsibility. Woman. The future of the sport is at stake. We need your help, Coach Bombay. With a nod, Gordon agrees to take on the challenge. Gordon, determined. I'll do it. Let's get the team back together. Fade to black. The scene... <clears throat> so there's the scene. 
Uh, it does have, it gives a little like explainer at the end. It says, the scene sets the stage for the rest of the movie, establishing Gordon's role as a mentor and leader while also hinting at the new threat that will drive the plot forward. So there's your opening scene. Quite powerful. Gordon Bob Bay is back. I get, we're just, again, throwing out all of my next game changers here. So this is the plot summary that our lovely artificial intelligence friend has given for Mighty Ducks 4. It says, in a hypothetical Mighty Ducks 4, Gordon Bombay has retired from coaching and passed the mantle onto a new generation of coaches. However, when a new threat to the sport of hockey emerges, Gordon is called back to action to train and lead the Mighty Ducks one more time. With a mix of old faces and new talent, the team must come together to defeat their toughest opponent yet and save the game they love. Along the way, Gordon must confront his own fears and doubts and rediscover the passion that made him a champion in the first place. So kind of similar to Mighty Dust Game Changers, uh, you know. But anyway, with fast-paced action and compelling characters and the storyline that appeals to fans of all ages, Mighty Ducks 4 is a must-see for anyone who loves the sport of hockey or the original Mighty Ducks movies. So kind of a promo there, too. Thanks, AI. So... We can't, you know, go scene by scene here. It doesn't let us do that, but it does um, sort of lay out some things and we'll go it out. So it says, after the opening scene, the movie could cut to a montage of Gordon reaching out to the former players of the Mighty Ducks, inviting them, inviting them to join the team once again. Some are hesitant at first, but others are eager to get back on the ice. Meanwhile, the new threat to hockey is revealed to be a wealthy businessman who wants to change the sport into a more aggressive and violent competition. He's already bought out several teams and is using his money and influence to bully others into submission. As the Mighty Ducks come together and start training, Gordon faces challenges from both his old team and the new enemy. He must find a way to get the players to work together, overcome their personal demons, and embrace their love for the game. So... Yeah, this this wealthy businessman is a whole deal, and like figuring out how that fits into, you know, a realistic thing. I don't know how it's gonna happen. We might have to take some liberties here, but essentially, that's about as much as we could get for it, uh, for this wealthy businessman and and why he's trying to change the sport of hockey to be more violent, isn't entirely clear, and. Chat GPT, if you try to get super specific, it will like give you some options, but it won't necessarily, you know, narrow down to a specific deal. But anyway, this guy is trying to change the sport of hockey. He's bought out several teams. So I, I guess he's a he's already bought like the NHL and all the minor league teams. And I guess the only way to stop this is for a new slash old team to form, which is the Mighty Ducks. So that's how we get Gordon. And we move on here. So I did ask for some actors to play this wealthy businessman. Chat GPT gave me four options. I'll give you all four. Uh, I, I will say it again, 2021, it doesn't, you know, take into account current events. So the first option it gave us, Kevin Spacey. I think he's out. If you don't know why, you can Google it. Option number two, Willem Dafoe. With his piercing eyes and distinctive voice, Willem Dafoe is known for his ability to bring intensity to any role. He would be a strong choice to play the wealthy businessman. The third option, Gary Oldman. says. Accomplished actor, wide range of roles, well suited to play a complex and multifaceted character like the wealthy businessman. And then the last option, Chat GPT gave us Michael Caine with his gravitas and classic charm. Michael Caine is a master of playing subtle yet powerful characters. So he would be a good option there. I did ask for a good name for this wealthy businessman. Again, I got options, uh, which I'm curious. I I like all of these. So I'm curious what the Quackalites are thinking here. Option one, Alexander Cross. Option two, Mason Blackwood. Option three, Blake Powers. Option four, Victor Stone. And option five, Julian Knight. I like Alexander Cross, Victor Stone. Those are probably my top two. So, though that is 
what we have here. We have this wealthy businessman, Alexander Cross. I'll just call him I'll just call him Alexander Cross. And let's just go with Willa. I kinda like Michael Kane. Let's go Michael Kane, Alexander Cross. Feel free to disagree with me, but I'll just use those for now as as placeholders until we can really hash this out. He is buying up teams. Apparently I got he has to have bought the NHL. That's what I'm going to come back to because if not, why would we be here? So he has bought the teams and he is, I, the, the question is like, why the mighty ducks and why, why would he even agree to this game? I guess he would have to have some sort of connection to Gordon. So USA Hockey contacts Gordon. He knows Alexander Cross. And then there's a some sort of deal where like Gordon says, hey, this is too much. I know you're trying to get the younger generation who loves, you know, all this violence, but this is too much. So he, he agrees to a game. But anyway, Chap GPT really gives us the the key scenes. The key scene. So first key scene, Gordon's first practice with the team. Gordon must get the team back into shape and help the players to rediscover their love for the game. This scene could also showcase the challenges that the team faces as well as Gordon's leadership skills as he motivates and inspires the players to work together. Second key scene, fr- confronting the businessman. At some point in the movie, Gordon and the team must face the businessman and his henchmen. This could be a tense and dramatic scene that sets the stage for the final showdown. I, I should have gotten more detail on this one. I don't know if I did and it just didn't give me anything good, but I, I'm curious to see A, the henchmen, and B, this, this showdown. Is this a, is this like a wolf the dentist stands in moment here? So and is that, are we playing three bar? Are we doing something like that? Uh, third key scene, redefining the team style of pay- play. The businessman's aggressive vision for hockey challenges the traditional values that the Mighty Ducks hold dear. In this scene, Gordon and the team must decide how they want to play the game and what they stand for. So this one could be good. They could say, it goes back to Gordon's old cheating ways and says, hey, we could win if we do this. But maybe Conway steps up and says, no, coach, you taught us how to fly. You taught us how to play the game the right way. And... Then, you know, they, they stay with their traditional values about teamwork and believing each other and whatnot and not some goons. Uh, key scene number four, overcoming personal demons. Each player on the team has their own challenges to face. This could be a series of scenes where Gordon helps the players work through their personal struggles and rediscover their passion for the sto- sport. And then the last key scene, the final showdown, the climactic finale of the movie sees the Mighty Ducks take the ice against the business man's team in a high stakes game that will determine the future of the sport. This scene could feature fast paced hockey action, tense moments and a triumphant finale as the mighty ducks secure the future of hockey and prove that the power of teamwork and passion can overcome any obstacle. So I asked about, you know, the final scenes and the way it could end. And there's really four options. Again, chat GPT, not going to commit to anything. Four options that they wanted to end or could end. An on-ice celebration, a speech from Gordon Bombay, a goodbye to the seniors, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, It says, the final scene could show the seniors and the team saying their goodbyes to the coaches and reflecting on the memories they've made and the bonds they formed over the times on the Mighty Ducks. But they're not high schoolers. So that one, and then the last one is future aspirations, which also doesn't make sense. And I also can't say aspirations where it shows like the players on the young or the younger players on the team sharing their aspirations for their future hockey careers and expressing their gratitude to Gordon and the team for the lessons they've learned. So I guess if we're pulling in younger younger players, I don't I don't know if we can get the game changers kids in here, but maybe we have new characters that are like 18, 19 and playing with these ducks, they join the squad. But I think there's something here uh, the on-ice celebration, yeah, they're joyfully celebrating their victory, group hug. And then I think the winner is the speech from Bombay. So they have the celebration, and then we have a speech from Bombay that says the final spe- scene could feature a speech from Gordon Bombay. 
thanking his team for their hard work and dedication and expressing his pride in their achievements. And I think that's the winner there. We get the celebration. He comes in the locker room. We know this is the last time all the Ducks are going to be together. This is the last time, you know, Gordon probably sees a lot of these people. They're all going back to their separate ways. And he gives a hot, he gives a deep and meaningful speech about, you know, how I met you kids way back when the real Minnesota miracle man, like it all, it touches on every single aspect of the three movies. And then we get a, a, a touching moment at the end. Gordon Bombay walks out of the locker room and then we, you know, fade to black. So there you go. There is chat GPT's idea for mighty ducks Four. um, the the tagline for them, or I guess the promo for them, is with fast paced act, hockey action, humor, and heart. Mighty Ducks Four builds towards a climactic finale as the Mighty Ducks take to the ice to face off against the new enemy and save the sport they love. Will they be able to defeat their toughest opponent yet and secure the future of hockey? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. I am curious to hear everyone else's ideas on this i'm kind of in if we can rectify why it's the ducks like why can't anybody else step up and take this challenge so we need we need to make a jump from evil businessman businessman has bought up all the hockey teams and it's changing the sport much to the dismay of the traditional hockey fans and why the Ducks need to be the one. Like if I'm Gordon Bombay and USA Hockey says we have one shot at this, I wouldn't go back to my Pee Wee team from like 30 years ago. I would try to get, you know, NHLers and whatnot to play in this. But I guess since Alexander Cross owns the team or owns the NHL now, he's he's preventing them from playing he's preventing all NHLers from playing maybe we get some good cameos of them in the crowd like rooting and you know Rich Eisen is announcing oh and and Maxwell Simpkins is his color guy he somehow pops up in there I would like that so yeah maybe that's it and so you're looking for a team of amateurs and Gordon knows that he can't just take anybody he needs a team that knows the value of teamwork and knows how to play together and knows how to play for the love of the game instead of, you know, money or being a goon and that kind of stuff. I do think we have a lot of opportunities here. I think the Bash Brothers can come back in a big way if the businessman team businessman's team is violent and things like that. I guess the question would be, if the businessman owned the NHL, why wouldn't he employ the NHL players? But I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot to figure out here. I want, A, your overall thoughts. Are you in or out on this? And B, how would you change the narrative to make it all fit? So, I, I like I said, I'm kind of in on it. I'm in on the concept of this one last gasp to save the entire sport. Like, that sort of escalates the stakes even higher than the Mighty Ducks have ever seen. But I just don't know how it all comes together with this. So we'll we'll need to do some punching up for sure. Maybe we can talk to Brill and maybe some of the we'll get Todd Linden, you know, for writer for Mighty Ducks Game Changers, but not the showrunner, who is a fan. And we'll get him and he'll bring in some of the other guys. I think they can punch it up for us and we can get this out. And maybe this is our first first piece of creative content once we acquire the rights to any future Mighty Ducks works. So we got a lot going for us. I think this is a good, this is a good start. It's going to take some work to bring back everybody or at least most of them. Cause you figure you got to have Charlie, you got to have Emilio and then you got to get most of the other ducks so you're you're getting Fulton and Portman. You gotta have the Bash Brothers. 
questions about the D2. Like, we want everybody, but, like, I know we could probably get Kenny Wu, Mike Vitar out of acting. I don't know. Banks will come back. We know that. And, you know, a few other people. I, like, I think we could get most of the people if it's a movie. Because we can set the movie way, you know, we can set the timeline there where we have enough leeway, lead time to bring in all these people. And we know a, a significant portion would do it. Sean Weiss is doing better now. We could get Goldberg in there. So I think we have a lot of opportunity to bring back most of these ducks. And then, yeah, fill the new team with some new characters. And, yeah, maybe we do have some younger guys who join the team. And there's a scene where, you know, they, oh, there's a scene where the ducks, you know, teach them some of the duck tricks. And they they teach them the flying V and stuff like that and how to use it in the game, the knuckle puck. And that's sort of passed down to the next generation. I, I would like that. You know, as Gordon gives his speech and walks out, we know that the information is passed down. Charlie looks at whoever these new kids are, these young guys are. Maybe they're NHLers, but they're playing different people. Like, I would love to see, you know, Connor McDavid with, like, a side role where he's just, like, a guy on the team and Charlie teaches them how to, you know, do the triple deke or something like that. That would be incredible. I think we have... We have a lot to go on here. It's just a matter of making it all happen. But thank you to Chad GPT for giving us the idea and for giving us a lot of the players and all that. So give me your thoughts. We'll cut it off early. Won't do a quiet question just because it's less fun when I do it by myself. So we'll, we'll save the quiet questions for another time. We'll cut it off a little early. So you guys have time to digest and write some notes in the discord or through email, Twitter, Facebook, at CorrectTakePod on Twitter, Facebook.com slash CorrectTakePod on Twitter. Write, write me there. Give us your thoughts, how we can punch this up, make this happen, because we're going to need some human intervention here. The robot is not quite good enough yet. And go to iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. Give us five stars. Write a review. It helps us helps drive us up the charts, which really strokes my ego. Makes me feel good. I get random emails about, oh, you're, you know, you're the 85th podcast in Greece. And I'm like, yeah, shout out to, shout out to the Greece fans. Uh, duck call, duck call to everybody in Greece, Greece and Trinidad and Tobago. We do real well in for some reason. So duck call to you guys. <laughs> and thanks to all our producers. Uh, Uche re-upped for us. She was sending me notes. Thank you. I appreciate it. She said, hey, sorry. My my payment didn't go through. It's okay. You this is a voluntary payment, but we appreciate anybody who can spare anything. It helps keep the lights on, helps keep me doing these pods, even when Tommy has a baby and Kevin's in Thailand. I do it for the fun and I do it for the producers and for everyone listening. So thank you for that. And remember, ducks fly together. <laughs>